Welcome everyone, my name is Philipp Wiesner. I'm a research associate at Technische Universität Berlin and I'm going to present you our latest research called LEAF, simulating large energy aware for computing environments. So information and communications technology is already accounting for more than 10% of global energy consumption and this number is expected to exceed the 20% mark within the next 10 years. Now, of course, this problem is not new and energy efficiency in the information and communications technology sector has been a major topic of research since a very long time. Um, in fact, there have been huge advantages throughout the years on all levels from low level hardware such as processors to more energy efficient data center architectures, advances in cooling um, and of course also more energy efficient algorithms and applications that are deployed on this um, hardware. However, we are also facing several new computing environments, mostly related to the Internet of Things, such as smart cities, Industry 4.0, etc. And these computing environments also come with new computing paradigms, usually referred to as fog and edge computing, that are supposed to complement traditional cloud computing. The big question now is, will these computing environments be responsible for even more energy consumption or will we be actually able to curb this trend? And if yes, how? Um, and there's plenty of open research questions in this regard. So, for example, providers probably want to know how to plan such edge infrastructures in an energy conserving way. Um, users and engineers are more interested in how fog and edge computing will influence the energy demand of the applications um, and how should um, these applications be adapted to be more energy efficient. And of course, there's also plenty of general research questions like what's the most efficient allocation of tasks and applications? How can we uh, build um, applications in a way so they adapt to those um, extremely variable and heterogeneous environments? And of course, most importantly, how to evaluate all these new algorithms and energy saving mechanisms on a larger scale. In order to facilitate research in this direction, we introduce a new simulator called LEAF. LEAF enables large-scale simulations of cloud, fog and edge computing environments and has a special focus on the modeling of energy consumption in these systems. Um, that is, LEAF features holistic but granular power modeling, meaning that all parts of the infrastructure, including sensors, fog nodes, data centers and also the consumption caused by networking between these nodes, can be modeled. Additionally, LEAF can also derive the energy consumption of applications running on this infrastructure. Our model enables the modeling of realistic and dynamic environments, meaning that nodes and applications can join or leave the simulation at any time. Um, nodes can be mobile, um, the bandwidth of network links can change and so on. So this is really crucial in realistically modeling um, heterogeneous for computing environments. Furthermore, LEAF allows the implementation of energy aware algorithms and hardware that can adapt their behavior depending on the state and energy usage of the system, which enables research on energy saving mechanisms, etc. And lastly, LEAF is designed to simulate thousands of devices and applications in magnitudes faster than real time. So this was really one of our main motivations and also really distinguishes us from all other fog simulators out there. The infrastructure model of LEAF is based on graphs, where each node is representing a compute node or device, um, no matter if we are talking about a single sensor or an entire data center. The edges between those nodes represent communication links, which can be anything from Ethernet to wireless communication standards or even entire wide area network links. There can also be multiple links between two nodes, which then resemble multiple possible ways of communication. Each node and each link have certain properties and resource constraints. So compute nodes are usually constrained by their processing power, but can also have additional constraints such as memory limits. Network links are constrained by their bandwidth, but users can also define additional properties such as latency, reliability, which can then be used for implementing routing policies. Now, in order to determine power usage, each node and each link in the graph are being equipped with their own power model. So what is a power model? In LEAF, power models simply describe a mapping of an entity's load to its current power usage. What's defined as load depends on the entity. For compute nodes, we usually talk about computational load, 
Um, and there are different units of measurement for that. One example are the million instructions per second. For network links, we refer to the current throughput, so the bits per second. The most simple but also most common form of power models are linear power models, like the one shown on this slide. One important thing to understand is the differentiation between static and dynamic power usage. Static, also called load independent power usage, is consumed when an entity is turned on but entirely idle. For many devices, this is actually the major part of the energy consumption and reducing the static power usage of systems um, is the main goal of most energy saving mechanisms. Dynamic power usage, on the other hand, is load dependent. Research has shown that these simple power models are actually sufficient in many cases. So, for example, for compute nodes, processors are usually the dominant energy consumer and their energy usage grows linearly with the load. Leave is entirely agnostic to the type of power model you want to use. So you can also implement models that depend on more parameters, are way more complex. Um, examples for more parameters um, are the distance between two devices, um, which for example is often a major factor in the power usage of wireless communication. Um, however, with increasing complexity, power models might impact performance on large scale. Applications in LEAF are represented as graphs too. Um, more precisely um, as directed acyclic graphs, which is a very common representation, especially in, in streaming systems. Nodes in this graph are representing tasks and edges are representing data flows between those tasks. Placing an application on the infrastructure means um, to map all tasks of the application to compute nodes and to map the data flows between the tasks to one or more edges in the, in the graph. The edge mapping um, can be implemented as a, as a routing policy. Of course, each task and each data flow also have certain resource requirements that have to be um, fulfilled for su um, successfully mapping them on the infrastructure. Now, each application consists of three types of tasks. First, there is one or more source tasks that are bound to a specific node, for example, a sensor, and produce data. Second, processing tasks have, to, uh, have incoming data streams, um, do something with the data, for example, they're filtering, aggregating, pre-processing, um, and processing um, tasks usually reduce the amount of data that is emitted by them. Um, and these processing tasks can be freely placed on the infrastructure as long as the resource requirements are fulfilled. Lastly, there's one or more sync tasks that have no outgoing edges and are also bound to a specific node. Um, in this example, the sync tasks is bound to the cloud data center, for example, to store the, the incoming data. Now, after mapping an application to the infrastructure, it is now very easy to compute the power usage using our power models. Um, thanks to this granular power modeling, we can now easily analyze the consumption of single edges, um, single compute nodes, subgraphs um, of the infrastructure, and even applications. A configuration, as described above, of course only represents the system state at a very specific point in time. In order to enable the simulation of dynamic environments over time, LEAF combines the presented graph-based analytical model with discrete event simulation. By utilizing events, users can, can read and update the configuration of the infrastructure and application graphs. Um, and this enables modeling of mobility, um, nodes that can join or leave the simulation at any point in time. Also, applications can start and stop at any time. We can implement adaptive task placement strategies that um, react to changes in, in the system state. We can implement adaptive energy saving mechanisms that, for example, turn off nodes that are idle. Um, we can also implement energy aware hardware, for example, batteries that um, update their state of charge over the course of the simulation and all that. Okay, and this brings us to the evaluation. We evaluate LEAF by simulating a smart city traffic scenario. The experimental setup is located in a city center inspired by the Manhattan Street Network, where we cover 16 crossings that are each equipped with a smart traffic light and optionally a fog node. In our infrastructure graph, each traffic light is additionally connected to a cloud data center via wide area network with a 4G LTE access network that is relatively power hungry. On the bottom left 
you can see the power model parameterizations of the infrastructure. All power models are simple linear power models as described earlier. And as you can see, fog nodes pose additional static power consumption to the system, while for cloud computing, the static power usage is part of the sigma of the incremental um, energy consumption per load, since we are viewing it as shared infrastructure. So we have no influence on components shutting on or off. Um, parameterizations of the wide area network link were derived from existing literature. Within the setup, we simulate 24 hours of taxi traffic in time intervals of one second. And this taxi traffic was actually modeled using real data on taxi traffic in New York City. On the bottom right, you can see the average number of taxis generated per minute, as well as their driving speed at different times of the day. Um, within this scenario, we simulate two different kinds of applications. So the first application is called CCTV and is running for each traffic light to monitor the traffic. More concretely, the source task is running on the traffic light and emit emitting um, large amounts of data like video data. Um, and the processing task, which can be freely placed on fork or cloud nodes, um, takes this data and, and processes it. And you can here think of applications like um, detecting accidents, traffic jams, pedestrian detection, etc. Finally, the sync task is located in the cloud. This application can highly benefit from fork computing by enabling a placement of the processing tasks close to the data source in order to, the, to reduce um, the traffic over the power-hungry 4G LTE network. The second application called V2i is a vehicle to infrastructure application um, which is running um, on each taxi in the scenario. This means that the number of running applications um, changes over the course of the simulation. Each taxi hosts um, a source task and communicates um, with the surrounding traffic lights, traffic lights, enabling them to coordinate traffic more effectively. Hence, every taxi has multiple traffic lights as sync tasks. Um, the processing task in this application is responsible for the coordination and it can be either placed in the cloud or a fork node. Um, this application can benefit from fork computing by placing the processing tasks on the fork nodes and hence avoiding the wide area network traffic altogether because the cloud doesn't need to be involved. Now let's have a look at the results. We executed eight different experiments that are mainly distinguished by the amount of fork nodes available. In the first experiment, cloud only, all processing tasks of both applications have to be placed in the cloud, which results in very high energy consumption caused by the wide area network. Again, the actual cause is the 4G LTE access network, mostly the base stations, so the core network is actually highly energy efficient. The bars FOG1 to FOG6 illustrate the energy consumption in the scenario when 1 to 6 FOG nodes are available. 6 FOG nodes are actually enough to host all processing tasks of all applications, which is why it is the maximum number of FOG nodes evaluated here. By adding more and more FOG nodes, we can decrease the energy wasted in communicating to the cloud data center. However, each additional FOG node poses additional static energy consumption to our system. Um, we can see that in the experiments FOG5 and FOG6, the overall energy consumption is actually going up again. And that is because the FOG nodes are heavily underutilized. The last experiment called FOG6S also has six fork nodes available, but features an adaptive energy saving mechanism. While in the previous experiments, load was equally distributed among all fork nodes until tasks had to be offloaded to the cloud. In this experiment, the workload is consolidated on as few nodes as possible, um, and then the idle nodes are shut off, effectively reducing the static power usage to zero. This reduces the static power consumption of fork nodes considerably, which is why the last experiment outperforms all others. Um, we will have a closer look at this in a second. Across all experiments, we can observe that Wi-Fi energy consumption plays only a minor role in the scenario. Next, we will have a closer look on energy consumption over time by looking at a few examples. The upper row illustrates the power usage of infrastructure components of the cloud-only FOG4 and FOG6S experiments. The lower row illustrates the power usage that Leaf attributed to the two applications. For the cloud-only experiment in the first column, we can see how both the CCTV and V2i applications consume very large amounts of energy. 
Contrarily, in the middle column where four fork nodes were available, we can observe that the fork nodes are able to provide enough computational capacity during large periods of the day and only during peak times tasks have to be offloaded to the cloud. For the CCTV task on this experiment, we can actually observe a very interesting behavior. During the night, the attributed energy consumption goes up, although we defined that there are always the same number of these applications running at any time. And this is because at night, fork nodes are underutilized. Um, and as leaf attributes also the static power usage to the applications proportionally, the attributed energy consumption of the application goes up. In other words, leaf identifies that this applications or these applications are responsible for wasting energy during this time. A smarter placement of applications mm, could avoid this waste of energy, which is exactly what we see in the third column, where the energy saving mechanism is uh, deployed. The dashed red line in the infrastructure graph um, is not constant anymore since idle fork nodes are shut off. So depending on the time of the day, only two to six fork nodes are active. And here we can observe that the power consumption of the CCTV application is constant again. Lastly, we will have a closer look at the two experiments that were in the, in the previous slide on the middle and, and right column. Um, so namely the fork 4 and fork 6s experiments. We can observe that the energy saving mechanism fork 6s outperforms fork 4 in two cases. First, during the night, so roughly between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m., we waste far less energy on idle fork nodes because they're simply shut off. Second, during peak hours, fork 6s provides sufficient fork computing capacity to host all processing tasks, while in fork 4, parts of the computation has to be offloaded to the cloud, resulting in additional power consumption because of the wide area network usage. These findings are in line with findings from previous research on identifying scenarios where fork computing can actually um, reduce the power usage of um, such systems. And the main motivation for including this energy saving mechanism here is to demonstrate how LEAF enables the implementation of energy aware online decision making algorithms. So what's next? In our future research, we are planning to identify potential synergies between these novel, highly distributed computing environments in the area of IoT, fog and edge computing, etc., and distributed power generation and energy storage. So given that, especially in urban environments, more and more roofs, for example, are equipped with solar panels, um, we want to identify use cases and architectures where we can make best use of this energy and leave us an optimal candidate for research in the direction of renewable or carbon aware computing um, because due to its simplicity it is very easy to combine it with simulators from other domains in co-simulation frameworks. Um, with this I will conclude the presentation. Um, I presented LEAF, uh, a new simulator for modeling energy consumption in large-scale cloud, fog and edge computing environments. LEAF is openly available Actually, there are already two implementations, one in Python and one in Java. So this evaluation that I just presented um, was based on the Java implementation that is based on the well-known Clouds and Plus simulator. Um, but also in the meantime, we created a second new implementation of Leaf in Python. And this Python, uh, Python version is, um, at least for now, a little less performant than the Java version but it's a lot simpler to use, it has a cleaner API, it's better documented, and of course, due to the Python ecosystem, it has a lot better library support. So we have access to all the major data analysis, machine learning tools, um, etc. So future development of Leaf will most likely take place on the Python version. Yeah, so check it out. Um, you can find all code and experiments on GitHub. This is the end of the presentation. Thanks a lot for listening. And in case you have any questions, feel free to write me an email.